Hello there, welcome back. I'm Michelle Jubry with you till 7 o'clock. The writer and Conservative parliamentary candidate Alex Dean and the political commentator Jo Phillips. I wrongly uh, said that she was a former advisor uh, to the Labour Party. I was completely wrong. Uh, it is indeed the Lib Dems. So sorry about that. That's it's right. the start of the week, everybody. What can I say? Uh, talking about whether or not you should get vouchers or cash if you're on uh, benefits, Elizabeth says having vouchers is a good idea in principle, but make sure that the vouchers cannot be sold on for cash. Uh, Sol, I think I pronounced your name right, you say, uh, voucher fraud cost the USA fortunes. The vouchers were being sold and people apparently uh, were printing fake vouchers. Uh, Ron, <laughs> there's no flies on you, Ron, because you've thought of that and you've got the solution. You say um, there should be ID used if you want to um, redeem these vouchers. Uh, Victoria says, I think it's absolutely disgusting that the government want to do this and try and control money in this way. Um, who's this? One of my viewers here saying, I really hope that Alex uh, they go, Gary, I really hope Alex never gets ill. Thinks that you might change your uh, mind if you did. Well, let's talk uh, asylum seekers, shall we? Because we've... I've got myself actually pretty bored now when it comes to talking about the Rwanda plan because we've gone around in so many circles, uh, haven't we? But now, apparently, the Rwanda plan does seem to be effective. That is according to the Irish government because they reckon they're getting an influx of so-called asylum seekers crossing over from Northern Ireland because apparently they're fearful have been sent to Rwanda. Um, they've declared some emergency laws there. Long story short, they want to be able to return those people back across the border into the UK. Currently, Rishi Sunak is having none of that. Alex Dean, where are you? If it weren't so serious, it would be hysterically funny. Um, when the UK said we wish to return people to the safe nation they had come from, France, UK to EU state, we were told it was racist, it was impossible, it was unlawful, it was unreasonable, it was a fringe position. Now Ireland wants to return uh, people to the safe nation they came from, the UK, EU state wants to return to the UK. Now it's not racist and it's possible and it's reasonable and it's uh, lawful and it's mainstream. I mean, the hypocrisy is obvious. Uh, the, the real pleasure I take from it, though, it does show that the Rwanda scheme is working as a deterrent already. We haven't, as people like to point out, managed to send anyone to Rwanda yet, but it's having a deterrent effect. Uh, and let me just ask you quickly then, so you're saying that the hypocritical and all the rest of it, if you remove that aspect, though, do you think that Rishi Sunak should be able to uh, receive, should be accepting people back? Take away whether or not it's hypocritical for them to ask or whatever. I won't take away that point, because unless and until they agree the EU, yeah. to take back people from the yeah. UK, we shouldn't accept taking people back from Ireland. Mm. Joe Phillip? Well, we, when we left the EU under Brexit, we also left the Dublin Agreement, which allowed us to do just that. And there was nothing on the table and there has been nothing to replace it. Now, you might have thought, might you, several years ago, that that might have been one of the things that they put in place to sort things out. Um, you might have thought, actually, that they might have done something to deal with the backlog of, of asylum claims so that they were processing people more quickly and sending them back to where they came from if they were not deemed to be have a, a valid claim. I mean, Alex is absolutely right. This is... You couldn't make this up. We've got the Irish Supreme Court, which ruled that because... Britain, because England, because Westminster had said, yes, we were going through with the Rwanda bill, that now meant that this is not a safe country because we could send people to Rwanda, which is not a safe country. So they're now looking at bringing in emergency legislation, the Irish, to overturn that ruling of their own Supreme Court a little bit which is what we've done here by passing the Rwanda law, which basically, you know, overturns the, the Supreme Court. I mean, it's Presum utterly ridiculous. Presumably, to get that done, they don't just have to say that the United Kingdom is a safe country. They will have to say that Rwanda is a safe country. Because otherwise, the, in the yeah, chain yeah. that the Supreme Court yeah. has set out... Precisely. Yeah. So, so the, you end up going round and round and round in circles. Um, and the money and the time that has been wasted on all of this. I mean, what is interesting is... Where are these people coming from? Because clearly they're not crossing the Irish Sea in small dinghies, as they do the Channel. They are presumably getting to Ireland in lorries, 
I don't know, and this I'm is one of the interesting points because apparently there's some discrepancy because what they're saying, what the Irish are apparently saying, the Irish government, is that about 80% of their recent asylum seekers' yeah. uh, crossings have come over from the UK, but there's been questions raised about exactly. how have you reached that figure? Uh, is yeah. that verifiable and is that kind of uh, particularly accurate? And there are big question marks um, over that. But, of course, people will be pushing back and saying, well, hold on a minute, because the government uh, successfully negotiated returns agreements, so to speak, with places like Albania. We've yeah. huge problems with Albanians coming over. That has almost stopped now. So they are being proactive. Oh, yes, I guess, uh, they are being proactive on some of those things. But Albania was sort of, it's fairly straightforward, isn't it? But there's an awful lot of people, there's something like 150,000 people who have been waiting for months, if not years, mm. to have their claims processed. Now, those people could be working, they could be paying tax, they could be economically active, they could be, you well, know, why, not, why have you not staffed up? This is something I don't understand. You've got this massive um, influx of people and cases I don't yeah. feel like the Tories have staffed up properly because if I was Rishi Sunak, I'd be shouting from the rafters, I've recruited another, f I don't know, 1,000 caseworkers or whatever it is. I'm sure I've never heard that. You, you and I have discussed this before, but I think not only should we speed up the uh, process of asylum uh, process. It's not... People may come here with the most bogus claim in the world. It's not but their fault that it takes so long no, to... Exactly. I'm trying to no, explain. Yeah. Uh, it's not their fault that it takes so long to uh, have their, um, pro their claim processed. Furthermore, I would let people work whilst that they're here under that uh, status. But it seems to me there's a clutch of things you can do in the same way that we have sat courts late and early, drafted people into... I can um, tell you're running for civil service. not answering my question. I, have they increased their workforce? No, I I don't think that they have to anything the way that I would do were it up to me. But so I'm answering your question, that, I think, yeah. I as find that a honestly as I can. I find that a national scandal, because if you've got all of these crossings, the influx that we're seeing now, sure. you've got all of these kind of ideas, what you're going to do, you, you're messing around, or not messing around, but we're spending a fortune with Rwanda, surely the most simple thing to do would be to increase if you're the staffing numbers to process yeah. these... I'm people. agreeing with you. If, you. if you are apprehended, having entered this country unlawfully, and you don't have a legitimate claim to asylum or a refugee status, your feet shouldn't even touch the ground. You should be straight back to wherever uh, it is that you're, you're meant to go. But just to reassure, just to make, make the point about the, how ironic the Irish position is, the Sinn Féin position is that our Rwanda legislation is horrific. It's that bad. But in order to get to be able to return asylum seekers They've to the United to Kingdom, it. they're going to yes, have to exactly. say Rwanda is a safe country. Yeah. I know. It's utterly ridiculous. And, you know, this whole thing about process. If you process people and those who were here wrongly were immediately deported, you know, yeah. as with the Albanian thing, um, then actually that would act as a bigger deterrent because I still maintain that the biggest single deterrent to channel crossings is the weather.